Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be talking about all the books that I hauled in April and May. <laughs> So the books in this box that I have that I've acquired recently that I got from Thrift Books, Book Outlet, I think there are like two new releases in here. I decided one day to splurge on myself because I have not done that in a very long time. So I got some books online. <laughs> so the first couple books that I have here are books that I got off of Thrift Books. The first book I have is The Summer I Found You by Jolene Perry and this is a book that I picked up because it has chronic illness and disability representation in it. This is a romance between a woman who was just recently dumped by her boyfriend when she found out that she has diabetes and our main character man the love interest is a soldier that came back from Afghanistan with part of his arm gone now and I think it's like their romance trying to build themselves back up again and maybe falling in love through that process. Um, this sounded so good to me it's fairly short and i haven't heard anyone ever talk about this book so i'm very excited for this one and i have when you're ready by jl berg jl berg wrote one of my favorite books from 2019 um and this i believe is her debut claire murray she just lost her husband ethan and she now has to raise her young daughter all on her own he was her entire world and claire had accepted a life without him without love until years later Fate brings her to an emergency room and face to face with a stormy eyed doctor intent on changing her mind. Logan Matthews is the son of a billionaire and has spent his whole life trying to make his absentee father proud. Without a family to depend on, all he's ever wanted is a place to call home. After a failed marriage, Logan believes he's unworthy of love until he meets a woman who awakens his spirit and transforms his entire life in an instant. That sounds <laughs> really good. And I got one of her more recent books that were released, uh, Forgetting August. So Everly was nearly ruined and ruled by Austin Kincaid in the past. And it doesn't matter that she's moved on, that she's about to marry another man. Apparently August now is in a coma. But she finds out that he's actually not anymore. August is awake with no memories. He sets out to solve the mystery of his lost life. He unearths a photograph of a beautiful redhead named Everly and knows instantly that she's the key. But when he finds her, the August she describes is more monster than man. So I guess it's about them coming together after this horrible incident that happened probably. The cover is beautiful. <laughs> I love it. I'm very interested to see how this book will play out because I want to see how she's going to get over something like that if it is a romance between the two even if he doesn't remember everything that happened. Next I got A Matter of Heart by Amy Fellner Domin Domini. I'm so sorry if I'm butchering that. I don't remember why I bought this book. <laughs> I think it has chronic illness or disability representation in it. I'm pretty sure that's why I bought this book but this is what all that the back says. One heartbeat can change everything. Swimming is who I am. Winning is what I live for. No one is going to stop me from becoming the fastest swimmer in the world. Not my dad, not my boyfriend, not even my own heart. This is a young adult book though, it says. I used to be a swimmer, so I guess maybe that's why I picked it up because it sounded appealing to me because I used to swim a lot. I guess I'll get back to y'all on this book if I actually do read it. <laughs> and then the last book that I got off of Thrift Books is Bound to Submit by Laura Kay. I tried to take the library binding off and just like Ugh, it's still sticky and gross and I've put rubbing alcohol on it. Nothing will get off the stickiness. Does anyone have tips? <laughs> this is a very short novella. Laura Kay wrote a book that I read I believe earlier this year that I really enjoyed um, and this one is about a main character named Kenna. She is an ex-marine and while she was a marine she lost her arm and her best friend in an IED explosion. Before she became a, a marine she used to go to a club called Blasphemy and there she would always meet with Griffin Hudson and she started to fall in love with him. He like rejected her and then she went and joined the marines or whatever. Now it's years later after she's done with the marines and after everything she's been through and she's been through a lot in her life and she doesn't know how to go back to the person she used to be and so she goes to Blasphemy to go and talk to Griffin and see if they can start up their relationship all over again to help her deal with some stuff going on in her life. I have already read this book. This is in my April wrap up if you would like to know my thoughts on it. Next I got two books that were released in the past two months. I have To Have and to Hoax by Martha Waters. This is our lovely ladies live show pick for the month of May. So if you want to join us in reading this book and have a live show discussion with us, uh, be sure to read this by the end of 
May. This is a historical romance dealing with an already married couple and I believe it was like an arranged marriage or a marriage of convenience and I don't think they live together uh, but then the wife gets word that her husband was in a horrible accident so she goes racing to his side but he's perfectly fine. She thinks that he played a mean trick on her so she starts playing mean tricks on him and I think it's just back and forth of them playing silly mean tricks on each other and hopefully falling in love through all of that. <laughs> it sounds super cute. I'm really worried kind of though because I I follow some people who haven't really loved this book as much as they thought they would. I'm kind of nervous, but I'm still really looking forward to reading this book with Ashley and Jen, so be sure to join us in May to read this book with us. And then the other new release that I got is Beach Read by Emily Henry. This is my first time buying from Book of the Month. This is a romance between August and January. They're both writers, and I believe January writes romance and then August writes literary fiction maybe and i think they're both having writer's block and they both live next door to each other and beach houses and they're kind of having writer's block and so they task each other with like the challenge of uh, writing each other's genres <laughs> maybe to get the ball rolling again and how they should write that sounds super cute i've heard really good things about this book so hopefully i will love this one as well now all the rest of these books are part of my book outlet order <laughs> so first i saw these books for very cheap on book outlet and i needed them we have two hardback beautiful editions of uh, two books from the Black Dagger Brotherhood series. We have The Chosen by J.R. Ward and we have Blood Fury by J.R. Ward. I love the Black Dagger Brotherhood so stinking much. This is a vampire romance series that is a million books long that I still have to read. I stopped reading the series right before The Thief. I think I got maybe like an hour into the audiobook and then something happened, I don't remember, but I gotta get back into the series. But I have read both of these, but I didn't have copies of them. And I have that shelf all right there. That's all Black Tiger Brotherhood books, like double stacked. <laughs> I kind of also want to collect them in hardback edition. And so I found these two on Book Outlet for very, very, very cheap. Both of these are gorgeous. I read both of these. I really enjoyed both of these. I loved this one more than this one, but um, these are both way into the series and this one is part of her spinoff series for the Black Dagger Brotherhood. I'm very excited to have these for my collection. Next I bought If You Come Softly by Jacqueline Woodson. I was so excited to see this book on Book Outlet. It says 20th anniversary edition so maybe it was released like a very long time ago. Let me see. Oh it was released in 1998. I read a article by Jacqueline Woodson for one of my classes this year and loved her writing and loved what she was talking about. And so I saw this book by Jacqueline Woodson on Book Outlet and had to buy it. It's very, very, very short. A timeless tale of first love. From the moment they bumped into each other in the crowded hallway of their Manhattan prep school, Ellie and Jeremiah know they fit together, even though she's Jewish and he's black. They come from such different places, but to them, that's not what matters. They have something private and apart from the rest of the world, but the rest of the world might not see it like that. Jacqueline Woodson's moving story of Starcross Lovers is irrelevant today as it was published 20 years ago and this anniversary edition contains a new preface by the author. That sounds so good. It's so short. I feel like it's going to be kind of like a punch to the gut, <laughs> but I'm so excited. I really loved reading her um, article earlier this year, so can't wait to read this one. I feel like if I'm in the mood for a hard-hitting contemporary, this one can definitely fill the bill for that. Next, I have A Bound Heart by Laura France. Hopefully that's how you pronounce it, but this cover is beautiful. I love her hair. I'm gonna read the back because I don't know what this is about at all. Though Magnus MacLeish and Lark McDougall grew up in the same castle grounds, Magnus is now laird of the great house in the Isle of Carrera. Lark is just the keeper of his bees, and the woman who could provide an elixir to help his ailing wife conceive and bear him an heir. But when his wife dies suddenly, Magnus and Lark find themselves caught up in a whirlwind of accusations, expelled from their beloved island, and sold as endangered servants across the Atlantic. Can they make a new beginning in this new world? Will their hopes be dashed against the rocky coastline of the Virginia colony? Wow, that sounds really hard-hitting, but that sounds super interesting and i guess it's about their romance through all of the struggles that they are going through i have not heard anyone ever talk about this book so i'm very excited to see what i think of it next i have a young adult contemporary only a breath apart by katie mcgarry this cover is very beautiful as well so jesse lakin apparently is cursed so the town folklore says but the only curse jesse believes is his grandmother's will in order to inherit his family farm he must win the approval of his childhood best friend and the girl he froze out his freshman year scarlet 
Copeland. And apparently Scarlett Copeland is a psychic. <laughs> so it seems like Scarlett is having a very hard time at home with her father. He has irrational fears, controlling attitude, and dark secrets at home. Scarlett may have to find a way to escape, but she'll have to rely on the one person she used to trust, the same boy who broke her heart, Jesse Lagan. Each midnight meeting pushes Jesse and Scarlett to confront their secrets and their feelings for each other. But as love blooms, the curse rears its ugly head. So I don't know if this is, is this urban fantasy maybe? I don't know. I thought this was contemporary. I guess there's a little bit of speculative magical realism maybe in here. I don't know, but I'm very intrigued. And I haven't heard anyone talk about this book either, but uh, it looks very cute. Next, we have a fantasy book that I've been wanting to read for years. We have Heart of Thorns by Brie Barton. So it looks like this book is about a main character named Mia. She has always trained to be a hunter because her father is a hunter. I think the leader of the hunters. Gods are feared, revered, and hunted. She's always wanted to be a hunter, but then her father announces she will marry Prince Quinn, heir to the throne. But on the eve of her wedding, Mia plots a daring escape only to discover the unimaginable. She has magic, which means that she's half god. So I guess it's her figuring all that out. I haven't heard anyone talk about this really. So I'm really excited. And hopefully this is another YA fantasy book that I really enjoy. The last three books that I have are all books by Mia Sheridan. I bought Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. This is a book that I've already actually read and I absolutely loved. One of my favorite books of this year. This is about a man character named Archer and he was an accident when he was a kid to where he cannot speak anymore and he's kind of like the town outcast and then this new girl moves to town and kind of befriends him. They end up like falling in love and it's like a beautiful friends to lovers romance that I really 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 enjoyed. Then we have Most of All You. So this is about Crystal and she learned long ago that love brings only pain and she really guards her heart. Then we have our other main character named Gabriel and he walks into Crystal's life. Despite the terrible darkness in his past, there is an undeniable goodness in him. Crystal finds herself drawn to Gabriel, his quiet strength is wearing down her defenses, and his gentle patience is causing her to question everything she thought she knew. So I guess they're both kind of broken and they come together and find love I guess. And the last book on this list is More Than Words by Mia Sheridan. This one is about Kaylin and Jessica and they met at 11 years old and Jessica knew he was a broken prince, her prince. They became each other's refuge creating a safe and magical place far from their troubled lives until the day Kaylin kissed her, Jessica's first real dreamy kiss, and then disappeared from her life without a word. Years later everyone knows who Kaylin Hayes is, a famous composer, infamous bad boy, what no one knows is that Kaylin's music is now locked deep inside, trapped behind his own interior demons. It's only when he withdraws to France to drink his way through the darkness that Kaylin stumbles into the one person who makes the magic return, Jessica, his Jesse. And she still tastes a fresh, sweet innocence, even as she sets his blood on fire. They don't belong to each other's worlds anymore. There are too many mistakes, too many secrets, too many lies. All they have is that instinctive longing, that need, and something that looks dangerously like love. This one sounds so so good. Again another book that I'm really excited to get into soon. So there you have it. Those are the many books that I hauled in the past two months. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to or if you have hauled any of these books or if you also splurged and bought a huge book outlet order like me. <laughs> but anyways thank y'all so so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye! Mm -hmm.